One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hi there, this is Phil Simborg from the Backgammon Learning Center, www.backgammonlearningcenter.com, uh, where we have uh, about 15 teachers standing by giving lessons on the internet in eight different languages. Uh, very, very organized, good teaching systems. If you're not familiar with it, we've had over three, 400 students over the last 20 years, and many of them have won major tournaments around the world and have uh, certainly done very well in money games as well and uh, consider taking lessons. It's the fastest way to improve. It certainly helped me a lot better than reading books and so on. Well, one of the biggest problems that I have had with playing backgammon live is counting pips. And I have, uh, I was an old friend of Jack Kassane who came up with uh, a cluster counting method, wrote articles on it, and I've shared that article with all of my students, and I've learned how to do cluster counting, and it certainly speeds things up, but it's still a real headache. And, uh, and my chouette, I have a chouette all the time, and uh, we have very good players at our chouette, open players, and sometimes we can argue for several minutes about what the real pip count is because we're all getting different numbers and getting different counts and it takes too long and it really holds up the game. There are a few people that are really talented at this. I, I can think of two in particular, uh, Karen Davis and Steve Sachs, who can count just about any position in maybe 10 to 20 seconds. They're unbelievable. And they use cluster counting and methods of shortcuts that I'm not even sure of. But I was complaining about this to uh, one of my students, and, and uh, who's also become a very good friend of mine, Jeremy Shear. Jeremy is from Israel, but uh, he now lives in Tanzania, where uh, he runs a charity. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. And Jeremy uh, came up with some additional shortcuts that I actually find much, much easier and faster to do in the right kinds of positions than cluster counting. And he asked me and gave me permission to share this with my students and share this with the world. And I think you'll find it kind of fun. And if you learn these and practice these, as I have done, you'll find that your counting is more accurate. Uh, it's easier and quicker to do. And the faster and quicker you can count, the more you will do it. And the more you count, the better player you will be because you'll make better checker plays and better cube decisions if you have accurate pip counts. So let me just show you what Jeremy came up with. He has several different approaches. I'm gonna show you a few of the simpler ones in this video, and then in a future video, we'll get into some other methods and more advanced methods. But let's take a couple of real simple methods. Here's something that Jeremy calls counting uh, uh, by twos, which is really kind of interesting. If you have two checkers on any two points, uh, of course, you can add 8 and 8 is 16, and 3 and 3 is 6, and 16 and 6 is 22. But there's a, a faster way to do it. 8 and 3 is 11, and 11 times 2 is 22. So that's maybe faster for you. It's certainly faster for me. But what if you had the two checkers here? You'd have 5 and 3 is 8. 8 doubled is 16. 16 is the pip count. What if you had three sets of twos? You have 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. Again, wherever they are, you can add the number of the points that they're on, and you'll come up with the right total. 15 plus 10 is 25, 30, 34 times 2 is 68. So anytime you have two checkers on a point, just add up the points that they're on, and multiply it times two. It's a super fast method and an easy method to do. Uh, again, no matter where the twos are, you can add them up very easily that way. And here we, I would simply add the twos and just add one extra checker here. So I do one plus three is four, eight, 14, 22, 32, 64, plus one, 65. Now, what happens if you have three checkers on a point? Well, that's the same principle. If you had three checkers here and three checkers here, you could do three times six is 18, and three times two is six, and 18 times, and 18 and six is 24. Or you can do six and two equals eight. Eight times three is 24. So you multiply times three, that's it. So if you had like a bunch of places where there were three checkers on the board, let's do this, you could and very quickly add 14 and 8 is 22 and 6 is 28 and 2 is 30 
30 times 3 is 90. If there were two checkers on a point, you do the exact same thing, and it would be 30 times 2 is 60. By the way, if you had four checkers on the points, you could do 4 times 4, or you can use the two methods, which I like to do. Uh, I like to just double it. So, for example, if I had this setup, I would do 2 and 6 is 8, and 8 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. I just double it. Or I would go 4 plus 12 plus 16 times 2. Either way, it's twice as much if you have 4 on a point. Well, why is it really good to do it this way? Because you don't always have positions where it very neatly you have two checkers everywhere. Sometimes you have two, sometimes you have three, sometimes you have four. To me, this system is the same as if you did two on every point and then doubled this point and then simply added 13 later. So the way I would count this system is I would add up the points. 13 and 12 is 25, 35, 43, 49, 51, 51, uh, and by the way, I do this another 10 to it, so I have 61 times 2 is 122, and add 13, because there's an extra checker here, 135. Real fast and easy, very simple math. You're multiplying times 2. You're adding simple numbers. You're not doing all kinds of complica complicated computations. So what happens when you have combinations around the board? When you have some checkers with 3 and some checkers with 2, it's real simple. You can do the 3s together and do the 2s together if you like. For example, here I have 10 and 7 is 17 and 5 is 22. 22 times 3 is 66. That didn't take long. So where I have the 3s, I have 66. Now I have 8 and 6 is 14. I have 16 and 32. 66 and 32, 98. Very, very quick, very, very easy, very well grouped. Very simple to remember. What if I had nothing but threes? That would be fun. If I had a bunch of threes together like this, this is really great. Four and five is nine and six is 15 and 15 is 30, 30, 60, 90. 30 times three, 90. Very, very quick, very, very simple. Uh, when you have all threes. You don't often have necessarily a prime. You don't always have that set up. Maybe you have a setup like this. To me, this is the same as if they're all threes, except I know I'm going to have one pip less because this is here. So my eyeball tells me I can use the threes very, very quickly. 13 and 8 is 21. And 11 is 32. And 4 is 36. 36 times 3, I can do that in my head, 13, 6 is 18, 108, and I take off the 1 because I have a shift, it's 107. So I could do this very, very quickly that way. If I had more like 2s and 4s on checkers, uh, I can do this one very easily, again, with the 2s method, doubling the ones that have 4. So I would do 13 and 13 is 26, and 8 is 34, and 12 is 46, uh, and 9 is 55, uh, times 2 is 110, plus this straggler of 3 is 113. I would never be able to count it that fast using other methods. So his method of using by 2s and using by 3s, uh, uh, and using by fours all works very, very well for me. Now, there's other many other shortcuts you can use. We all know, uh, if you study cluster counting, that any two checkers across from each other are 25. So if I had a bunch of twos and I had two checkers uh, across from each other, I would simply do my little trick with the twos and add this 25. And two checkers across from each other anywhere is 50. So I could do my little trick and add 50. I won't have to go and add all these. So I can do 1 and 3 is 4, 8, 8 and 11 is 19, 38 and 50, 88. Look how quickly I did that. Believe me, before I started using this system, I couldn't do it this quickly. I know Steve Sachs and Karen Davis could, and other people who have other shortcuts could, but this system really, really saves a lot of time. Now, we can get creative with different kinds of combinations of 
of grouping these by twos, threes, and fours, and even fives, but I like to stay in groups of twos and threes. Uh, so how would I count this position quickly? Well, very quickly I notice that I have a three here, a three here, and a three here. And if I count this as a three, I can also then count this as a two, a two, and a two. I can do this very quickly over the board. Let me show you how. I would take the threes first. I have a seven and 11 is 18 and 13 is 31. 31 times three is 93. Now the trick is to remember 93. Have some method of doing that so you don't forget it, but it's not too hard to remember 93. Probably you repeat it twice or whatever. Now I do the twos. Four and nine is 13 and 11. I'm counting these twos that I missed before. So we have four and nine is 13 and 11 is 24 is 48. 48 and 93, 141. That's a real easy way to group it. Uh, there's all kinds of ways you could do this. You could do this all by twos. You can use this as a two, this is a two, this is a two, this is two twos, and this is a two, and then remember that you've got a spare here, here, and here that you need to add. It's that easy. The fours, if you have a, a bunch of fours, if you see a pattern where you have uh, uh, several fours, that makes it even easier. I would love to do a pattern that has lots of fours in it. Uh, let's take a, a position like this. Well, this one I can do them all as threes and then just add these three, or I can do all these as fours and just add uh, these these checkers right here, which I know is 12 pips. So you can do this any way you want. You could actually do this by twos and double it by doubling these numbers. You can do it either way. So let's take a shot at this. 11 and 9 is 20, 27. You can do 27 times 4, or you can double 27 to 54 and multiply that times 2. You've got 108, and then you add 12 pips is 120. So either way, you're going to get to 120. You can take the total of these points and multiply times 4, or take the total and multiply times 2 and times 2. Here's the other position. Um, this position, again, uh, I, I can do it all by twos, and I would end up with an extra checker here and an extra checker here. Or I can do these three by threes, and then these, this two, this two, and this two. I, again, I like the threes and the twos. My eyeball will learn to catch this a lot faster, and so will you if you practice this. So let's do the threes first. We have 13, and 8 is 21, and 6 is 27. We can do 27 times 3. Well, 27 uh, is 54 and 27 more would be 81. So remember 81. Now I do the twos. I have 6, 10, 12, 24, and 81, 105. So groups by threes and fours are real, real easy. And again, if you had uh, a, a couple of groups of fours, that makes the whole thing, the whole process, very, very easy. This is two fours, and this is three twos. I can do it that way, or I can do this all as twos and then just add one pip. I'd like to do it all as twos and add one pip. And I think it's easier to start with the highest point because you're adding smaller numbers each time and it makes it a little easier. So I would start with the 13 and come down here. Uh, that's a good tool that uh, Jeremy reminded me of. So I have 13 and eight is 21 and 12, because I have two sets of twos, 21 and 12, is 33, and 8 uh, is 41, and 2 is 43, 43 times 2 is 86, and the one more pip is 87. So again, I'm using fairly small numbers all the time, multiplying with small numbers, using it by twos. I just love doing it this way. Now, something else that I found was fascinating uh, is, is what Jeremy calls his symmetrical counting system. Let's pretend that you have a symmetrical uh, grouping of checkers where they're all in a line together. Uh, and, and you could use the twos method. You could add up 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and 7 and multiply it times 2. But when it's symmetrical, he found that there's another real good shortcut. You take the highest and lowest point and add them. 12 and 7 is 19. 19 
and there are five points. What's 19 times five? So 19 times 10 is 190. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I've got six. What's 19 times six? Well, 20 times six is 120, less six is 114. So what you do is you just take the highest point and the lowest point, if you have two checkers at every point, and you multiply it times the number of points. Anything that's symmetrical. Let me show you an even easier, simpler one. This is a symmetrical position. Three and four is seven. Seven times two is 14. Um, this is symmetrical. You, you, you can see the symmetry. You have two here, like two in the middle, and two here. Now, instead of, you can use the counting by twos method. One and two is three. Three and 11 is 14, doubled is 28. Or you can see that the symmetrical method also works. Six and one is seven. There are four points. Four times seven is 28. So any symmetrical system would work. Um, let's take this position. Six and two is eight. Eight times five is 40. Let's keep it symmetrical. Let's move this here and this here. Seven and one is eight. Eight times five is 40. It's always gonna, it's still gonna be 40. You put these out here and you put this here, it's still symmetrical. You still have seven and one is eight. Eight times five is 40. Every single time, this is gonna be 40 if it stays symmetrical. So when you have positions that, where you can see the symmetry, uh, you can really, uh, you can really do a, a lot more uh, good counting with, with this. This outside is all symmetrical. It would have take, normally take me a while to count this. You've got three checkers, uh, three points, and a blank, and three points. Ignore these checkers for now. So if you do these, this as symmetrical, 13 and 7 is 20. You've got six points made. 20 times 6. 6 times 20, that's 120. And you add 18 is 138. It's so the number of points times the two end spots. So now let's take a look at some positions where we have multiple checkers in a symmetrical position. I love it because uh, it really uh, shortens the process as well. Let me show you. Uh, here is a symmetrical position with threes. We have 8 and 12 is 20. We would do times 5 is 100, and we do half again, 150. So you're multiplying it times 1.5 when you have three checkers on in a symmetrical position. Uh, again, this would be the same as if all these five checkers were on the 10 point, but if you had an even number of points with three, then people would have trouble with this. Now let's go back to twos. If you had nine and 12 is 21 times four points, 21 times four is 84. So if we had another row of checkers on, we'd do half of 84, which is 42. 84 and 42 is 126. So you do 1.5 with three checkers on each point in a symmetrical position. Let's take a look at another position. Here's a symmetrical position with three again. Again, if you had two on every point, you'd add the five and the 13 is 18 and you one, two, three, four, five times 18, and you do, that would be 90. So you do 90, and now with three, since it's 1.5, I half of 90 is 45. 90 and 45 is 135. So it's 1.5 times the number of points when you have three. It's that simple. What happens when you have four? Let's go to that position. When you have four on every point, it's twice as much as if you had two on every point. 13 plus 9 times 3 points, 66 times 2, 132. Very, very simple. Uh, and of course, uh, any time that you see a symmetrical pattern, you can always do symmetrical patterns. Here's If you ignore these two checkers and ignore this checker, you've got a symmetry of these points right here uh, from this base. So you could do 2 and 10 is 12. Uh, 12 times 5 points, that's 60. And then, you know, 6 and 4 is 10, 70, 80, 1. You can do it that way if you see symmetry, or you can do this all by twos. Eventually, uh, your eyeball will catch whatever you're used to catching and whatever you like to do 
uh, easier and faster, you'll do it that way. I, I kind of like the symmetry here. I, when I see something that looks so symmetrical, uh, the trick is, of course, seeing the symmetrical, even though you have blue checkers that are all over the place that may be uh, part of the count. But, you know, these are positions where you really need to know the pip count to see uh, when you have a double and when you have a take and so on. So look for symmetrical positions. Now, often you'll have positions that are not quite symmetrical. You'll have a position like this. This is not quite symmetrical. So it's very simple. In your mind, make it symmetrical. Pretend these two checkers are here and then add two. If these two checkers were here, 10 and 6 is 16 times 5 points. Uh, well, if it was doubled, it would be uh, 16 is 160, so that's 80 pips, but I had to add two more pips because I shifted two. So this is 82. So again, if it's not symmetrical, you can in your mind make it symmetrical and adjust. Uh, prime positions become much, much easier to count this way when you have situations like this. For example, this position, I could just do, pretend these, these checkers aren't here, and do this as symmetrical, and then add uh, these three checkers, which I know, 6 and 6 is 12, and add 17 to my total. I can do that that way. 4 and 9 is 13, and there are 6 points, uh, 13 times 6. So 13 times 6, and then you add this. Again, I'm not going to take up the time. <laughs> now, let me show you something else, Jeremy. Uh, I, I won't say he discovered, but he some of these things he knew and some of these things he found. If you have a checker here and here, we know that the 13 point and the 7 point are equals 20. So if you had this, you would have 40. But I didn't know and I didn't realize that it's also 40 if you have the same configuration down here. This is also 40 pips. And again, losing his system, 19 and 1 is 20 times 2 is 40. Now you very rarely will see this system, this setup, but you often have this. You often have two checkers in your ace point where you're holding your opponent's bar point. So if you know that this is 40, this is simply two pips closer is 38. So you can rule out these checkers very, very quickly by knowing that checkers across this way are 40. Something else interesting is checkers across the other way equals 60. 12 and 18 equals 30 times two is 60. And the same thing if you had two checkers here, this is B60, this is 60, your total pip count is 120. So knowing checkers across from each other, two and two are 50, and the corners are either 60 or 40, in addition to using the combinations of twos and threes, will save you a lot of time counting pips. How would I count blue here? Well, again, I'm gonna do all of these by twos and use the system of twos and then add these three checkers, which I know is 15 right away because uh, this this is 6 and 4 is 10 and 5. I just know that from my cluster counting. So I'm going to count this all as twos, and I can either shift these over to here and pretend they're here and do uh, symmetrical counting, or I can just use the method of twos. Well, actually, it's very much faster to do the symmetrical counting. Let's make a shift. Pretending these checkers were here, we now have a symmetrical setup, and we have the 2 point and the 7 point. 2 and 7 equals 9. 9 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. 9 times 6 is 54. Add 2 pips for these two to be here, and we're at 56. And we add 15 more to 56, and we get 71. So you can do it that way. You could do the threes as symmetrical. You can do, uh, you're on the 4 point and the 6 point, that's 10. I would make that 15 times 3. These checkers equal 45 pips right here, and then I can do these by twos. So if this is 45, this is the 2 and 3 is 5, and 8 is 13 times 2 is 26. That's 71 total. So again, play with it. Again, use whatever systems you like, but I think you'll find that Jeremy's systems are really, really great. Now, I want to thank Jeremy for sharing this with the world for coming up with this idea and, and being willing to give it to me and to all my students and anyone watching this video. But I want to tell you something about Jeremy because I love this man. Uh, he is not only a nice guy, 
He is addicted to backgammon. He's been taking lessons for about two years from me and now from me and David Presser, uh, uh, who is now in Israel. And, and Jeremy speaks Hebrew and English. So he takes Hebrew lessons uh, in backgammon from David Presser and he takes them in English from me. And his game is improving greatly. In the past two years, he went from a total rank beginner to a very fine, solid uh, intermediate player. Uh, and he loves the game. He's made put together PowerPoints that have helped me and my students uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Jeremy. I've got just a short uh, uh, slideshow here uh, that he sent me. And uh, he is a, 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 one of the leading homeopathic doctors in the world. Now, I have some friends. My brother is a doctor, uh, was a professor at Johns Hopkins. He isn't particularly wild about homeopathy, but it's another approach. And some people love it, some people hate it, but the point is that it's the number two most medical uh, approach used to work with people all over the world, and it's very, very popular, and it's helped a lot of people. And Jeremy has schools and does lectures all over the world. Uh, he, with his wife, Camellia, set up a voluntary project called Homeopathy uh, for Health in Africa. They treat people with HIV and AIDS in Eastern Africa, and they use natural medicine. Uh, Jeremy himself moved to Tanzania with uh, uh, Tanzania, I'm sorry, with their three children in uh, 2008, and they now run 19 mobile clinics, including hospitals and rural villages, uh, treating deaf children, uh, albinos in the Maasai tribe, uh, treating AIDS. They've had over 7,000 patients. They have uh, incredibly good results that are documented. They also run a food and secondhand eyewear projects for HIV and AIDS patients. Uh, it's all charity work. Uh, it's all based on uh, donations. Uh, he does an incredible job. He has a pharmacy, as you can see, clinics all over uh, East Africa. They do home visits to people who aren't able to make it to the hospital and take care of these people. And uh, they provide food. Uh, and again, over 7,000 patients. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, with the Maasai, they have a special schools uh, for, um, for albinos. Uh, which are treated a lot of, as out, outcasts and need special help and uh, uh, they work with the Maasai uh, warriors. And they also teach people. They have students and volunteers that come and help them, and they teach them how to help these people. So this man is a saint. Uh, I met him the first time live. We got together in Monte Carlo. Uh, he tries to make it to tournaments. He went to Cyprus. I've seen him in tournaments around the world. He just loves this game. He travels all over the world, and he tries to combine his lectures and his charity work around the world with backgammon so we can make it to some of these backgammon tournaments. So he loves our game. Why am I showing you this? I think the man's a saint. I want to do something in return for him. Here's Jeremy right now, right here with his lovely wife uh, from uh, uh, Denmark. And the work he does is just a terrific daycare centers. Uh, I'm asking you as a volunteer to voluntarily go to his website and donate something uh, to his charity. Uh, the website is homeopathyforhealthinafrica.org and you can donate $10, a million dollars, whatever you think is fair. Uh, get, let's give back a little bit to Jeremy for sharing his counting ideas. I promise you, you're gonna enjoy the game of backgammon more because of it. And we're helping a fellow backgammon player do something great for the world and uh, uh, great for the people of Africa. Um, the man is, uh, and by the way, if you ever meet Jeremy, you'll see he's just a gentle, sweet guy. Become a great friend and uh, uh, do what you can. Again, homeopathy for health in Africa.org, and there you can donate uh, whatever you feel is appropriate. Uh, I was going to charge for this video. I was going to charge $10 and give all the proceeds to his charity. Jeremy said, no, please don't do that. This is my gift. I said, okay, but let me give it, let's have it take a chance on maybe some people returning the favor and giving a gift to you in return. So um, I hope you'll do that, and I hope you'll try these counting methods and stay tuned because Jeremy's got some more ideas. He's got another system in addition to this that's going to do um, comparative counting where you can get the comparative uh, pip count very, very quickly. Uh, and uh, I don't want to confuse the issue right now. So stay with these two methods. You have very, very good shortcuts. It's going to help your game, help you enjoy backgammon. That's what it's all about. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can email me at pjsimborg at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.